With the transfer window now having slammed shut it was disappointing that we didn't get the striker that Ronald Koeman said we needed and if, as we've been told, Everton were in for Olivier Giroud then letting the drag out has probably cost us. If Everton put a bid in while HES on the beach in his flip-flops and Arsenal accepted, he'd feel that he wasnt wanted and would come to Goodson. When you're away on holiday you can forget what it's like to be at a club. As soon we got into prices and then he'd be feeling at home again. Giroud got his opportunity and scored in the first game of the season against Leicester. Olivier Giroud celebrates scoring the fourth Arsenal goal against Leicester City image Stuart McFarlane Arsenal FC via Gertie images after that Arsene Wenger told him he could stay if he wanted and he felt loved again and was ready to fight for his place. Allowing Giroud to get settled back in ensured Everton missed out but I feel we could have got him if we'd have acted quicker. Obviously it was a busy time when they were getting the likes of Wayne Rooney and plus a lot of others but they knew there was going to be a big hole at centre-forward with Romelu Lukaku going and in hindsight we probably should nt have let Rom go until Wed brought a replacement in. Bradley Lowry on a in tribute match at Goodson Park the emergence of Dominic Calvert-Lewin could have been a factor in the management ultimately not bringing in a high-profile centre-forward. HE's come to the club a season ago and has enjoyed a good year of development. Dominic has come back full of confidence from scoring the winning goal for England in the Under-20s World Cup final and Ronald is obviously a fan of him given that he wants him in his 11 and has played him in all sorts of positions. Dominic Calvert-Lewin during the Premier League match between Manchester City and Everton at Etihad Stadium the boy will do the best he can wherever HES selected but he proven already that his best position is up top and HES done the business when he has been given the opportunity there and at the moment HES ahead of the new signing Sandro Ramirez. We saw a similar situation at Manchester United where young Marcus Rashford moved ahead of a few others in the pecking order and HES and T looked back since. Hopefully Dominic can build on his early season momentum and follow suit. If he kicks on then great. He has shown some decent form for both club and country this summer and now has the chance to step up and although there's no other traditional number nines now, there is competition to play there from other strikers in the squad. I hope we can find a way of making it work because if we fall behind I'm struggling to see how we can get back in two games with the personnel we've currently got. Blues could pay the price for not finding Bain's cover as well as centre-forward, were also short of cover in my old position of left-back now that the window has shut and it always surprises me why for one reason or another, clubs leave things so late. They blame agents and players, Everton certainly weren't the only ones to try and a last-minute business, that lot across the road missed out on targets and even the likes of Real Madrid and Barcelona did too. Why? They leave it so late I don't know. Why Jeffy Sigurdsson deserved his Everton move says X1Z teammate OK it can be like a merry-go-round and you have situations like Alexis Sanchez proposed move from Arsenal to Manchester City not going through and as soon as one club says no it's like a domino effect. Not getting deals done could hurt us between now and January but if you can't find the right player there's no point wasting your money on someone you're not committed to for the long time. You've just got to bide your time and wait for the right opportunity. I thought it was important not just to get a number 9 but someone who can cover for Leighton Baines on the left side of defence. Leighton Baines of Everton gives his team instructions at Stamford Bridge image Julian Finnegatti images with us having Europa League group matches now, there's the added games and the travel that comes with that. Fingers crossed Leighton can stay injury free because it come back to bite us on the backside because we don't have cover in that area of the top quality that we need. We've brought in a lot of new faces though and have also boosted the under-23 squad which is good because it shows that the club have a long-term strategy and that Fahad Moshiri is looking at the bigger picture. It's difficult to attract the top quality players when you're not in the Champions League but we're going in the right direction. The window is closed so we've got to back the squad that we've got. Ronald has been in charge for three transfer windows and has really reshaped the squad and the majority are his own men now. If we have a successful run between now and January then we might land some big names in January. You've got to have that desire to play even if you feel unwanted it wasnt just incoming deals that didnt get done that Everton, there are still a clutch of players at the club still hanging around who don't look to have a future under Ronald Koeman and they need to take a look at themselves.
You just want to play football. Not playing is very difficult and it hurts your morale. It's a strange situation if you feel unwanted but you've just got to roll your sleeves up. You've just got to have a desire to play and prove the doubters wrong. Sitting around without a squad number for over a year is not what you want to be doing. If you're not part of the manager's plans then you've got to be a man and stand up and try and do something about your long-term future. It happened to myself at Rangers. Rangers Michael Ball getting stuck into Cristiano Ronaldo of Manchester United No matter what I did in training, I could have been playing like Maradona, I would NT be playing at the weekend. It was because of the contract situation because they knew they'd have to make a payment after my next appearance. The manager and chairman wanted to play me but they couldn't afford it. David Murray, the then Rangers chairman, pulled me in and said look, let's sort this out, we need you to play, we can't go any more games without you. What can we do? I ended up paying £4,000 a game but it was worth it because if it have stayed in Scottish football for another two years without kicking a ball my career would have been over, it have. Maybe had to go down to League One. Everton new boy Nicola Vlasic reveals why she is smiling all day I had a big decision to make but at the end of the day I wanted to play football and it put me back in the shop window. It worked out for me because we won the last game of the season, caught up with Celtic, and I ended up winning the double. Luckily enough those performances earned me a move to Eindhoven with Guas Hiddink's PSV. It paid off because I've now got those medals and those great experiences and after a tough few months I got the smile back on my face. Barclay's situation seems strange finally we had the situation of the Everton player who wanted to go but then turned down a big move. Ross Barkley not going to Chelsea was a strange one. Ross Barkley it's hard to have an opinion when you don't know both sides of the story but it's obvious there's something not right there. Ross needs to figure out whether HES bothered about England and the World Cup next summer because in my mind it doesn't look like he is. Ross Barkley's messages leave us none the wiser while HES injured now hell require a run of games to try and work his way back into the squad and go to Russia. It's not about finance for him, you'll get money wherever you are in the Premier League, there's something else in the can that I SNT sitting right for me. Personally I hope he stays but I can't see a Uton on this one and Coman won't want to be undermined by any player.